Hi, welcome to Mom on the Spectrum. I'm Taylor, and today I'm going to be taking the Autism Spectrum Quotient Assessment, the AQ, which is a diagnostic tool that can be used in some autism evaluations to help you discover whether or not you're on the spectrum. Not going to lie, I've been trying to make this video for a long time, but I've been stuck with some autistic inertia problems and I haven't been able to start. So rather than getting dressed and doing my makeup and cleaning up everything, I just decided I'm gonna sit down in front of the computer and film this. So here we go. So first of all, again, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Make sure you subscribe so that you can stay tuned with updates and all kinds of resources that I love to post for the community. I'm not a therapist, I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a doctor. I'm an autistic mom who's sharing my experience to help you know that you're not alone and that there are resources out there to help you navigate life on the spectrum and that life on the spectrum is actually pretty cool. And there's lots of cool people here. I hope that you'll interact in the comments because this community is amazing. Make sure you stick around until the end of the video. I'll be sharing more information about how to join an autistic community group. Um, those are small groups that I run online to help us meet each other in the community and gain other connections, resources, support, and again, remember that we're not alone. So today, the Autism Spectrum Quotient, the AQ, um, this is a test that was part of the battery that they used whenever I was undergoing my professional autism evaluation in 2020. Um, this is a test that you can take for free online at embrace-autism.com. Just taking this test alone does not mean that you're autistic. This isn't in any way like a final like, oh, you're autistic, signed, sealed, delivered, you know? I don't know why I said that, that's a weird phrase. But it will give you a good indicator if you might fall on the spectrum, and there are also more tests that you can take on that website embrace-autism.com that will help give you further inclination as to whether or not you might want to look into this professionally. I also have more videos on my channel that will help you navigate the diagnostic process as well as help you better understand what tools and tests I underwent to get to my diagnosis. So, Autism Spectrum Quotient. I love the Embrace Autism website because it's very thorough. So, Dr. Natalie Engelbrecht is the one who is behind this website. So she has a little scale on here that will tell you how she's rated the assessment. This one says, appropriate and respectful wording, four out of five stars. Clarity and lack of ambiguity is two out of five stars. We'll talk about that in a second. But the testing accuracy is five out of five stars. There are 50 statements in this assessment and it takes five to 10 minutes to take. It'll be probably longer here because I'm gonna be saying them all out loud. And the author is Simon Baron Cohen. It was published in 2001. This test is designed for adults 16 and older of average, average or higher intelligence. It says that the AQ is available in most languages. That's pretty cool. It's underlined with a link, so maybe you can click on that and find other languages for you. And non-adult versions are also available. So there's a version for adolescents and children. When you're taking the test, there are 50 statements and each statement has the same four choices. One, definitely agree. Two, slightly agree three slightly disagree, and four definitely disagree. This note is interesting to me. It makes no difference to your score whether you choose slightly or definitely, so treat the statements as a binary choice, agree or disagree. The scores range from zero to 50. The threshold score is 26 and higher. So scores 26 or greater indicate that you might be autistic. Lower scores mean that you likely are not. 79.3% of autistic people score 32 or higher. I'm gonna tell you my score at the end. Most non-autistic males score 17 on average and most non-autistic females score 15 on average. So without further ado, here we go. Question number one. I prefer to do things with others rather than on my own. I said definitely disagree. Number two. I prefer to do things the same way over and over again. I said slightly agree. I'm also ADHD, so I have to have novelty and switch things up every once in a while. Number three, if I try to imagine something, I find it very easy to create a picture in my mind. Definitely disagree. I've talked about this before, like world building is really hard for me. I know some of you out there love fiction and a lot of people on the spectrum love fiction. I don't really do well with fiction because I cannot picture things when they're written down. Like I have to be able to see it. Okay, number four, I frequently get so strongly absorbed in one thing that I lose sight of other things. Definitely agree. So this goes back into the autistic inertia of like once you start something, you're zeroed in and you get really upset if you have to veer away from doing that, generally speaking. Number five, I often notice small sounds when others do not. Definitely agree. No explanation necessary. 
That's why I use my earbuds all the time. Speaking of earbuds, if you need help with sensory overwhelm, I work with Flare earbuds and I'll put a link in the description. You can order your own earbuds and they help so much. Number six, I usually notice car number plates or similar strings of information. I said definitely agree. Number seven, other people frequently tell me that what I've said is impolite even though I think it is polite. I said slightly disagree because, and again, it doesn't matter if you say slightly or strongly, it's gonna score the same. Because I think a lot for me is masking. Like I feel like if I really said uh, what I wanted to say, a lot of times it would be considered impolite just because I wish that I could be way more blunt than I've trained myself to be. Number eight, when I'm reading a story, I can easily imagine what the characters might look like. I said slightly disagree. Again, it's, it's a whole world building thing. I have trouble with that. Number nine, I am fascinated by dates. This is one that Dr. Engelbrecht suggested that you switch the wording of because now, I think I said this was published in 2001, so we've learned a lot more about autism and how it presents. So she suggests rewriting this as, I am interested in patterns or correlations of events. And for that one, I said definitely agree. Page two, number 10. In a social group, I can easily keep track of several different people's conversations. I said definitely disagree, no thank you. Number 11, I find social situations easy. Definitely disagree. The tornado siren is going off at my house. It's just a test, don't worry. Clearly, everything's fine. Number 12, I tend to notice details that others do not. I said definitely agree. A lot of times I'm so sidetracked by things that I notice that nobody else thinks about. Number 13, I would rather go to a library than a party. This question bothers me so much, and I think this is what Dr. Engelbrecht meant by lack of clarity. It depends, like what kind of party? Is this me and my bestie like going to a Harry Styles concert? Like that sounds really fun because we did that. Or is it like a loud party with lots of drinking and like people playing loud games? What kind of library is it? Am I doing, you know, like I just, I'm like, am I doing research? Am I just sitting in a corner and reading something fun? Um, which I don't do, I just read things to learn. Um, but anyways, there's so many caveats here. So I said definitely agree under the premise of like, I would rather kind of do my own thing and learn than like be with a group of people in a loud environment. That's where I'm coming from. Number 14, I find making up stories easy. Definitely disagree. So for this very reason, I don't, I can't like, I don't want to say I can't. I have a lot of trouble making up stories for my kids at night, you know, like when it's bedtime story time. I, I'm i like, once upon a time, there was a boy and he was six and he had a sister and they lived in a house and they had two cats. <laughs> like I just, I, I stick to what I know and I have a hard time branching out of that. Number 15, I feel myself drawn more strongly to people than to things. I said definitely disagree, but it doesn't mean that I don't like people. I really like people, I really do. Um, but I'm, I'm really drawn to learning information, knowledge, learning new concepts, software, programs, that kind of stuff. Number 16, I tend to have very strong interests which I get upset about if I can't pursue. Definitely agree. And that kind of plays into autistic special interests which I have another video about. Number 17, I enjoy social chit chat. Definitely disagree, I hate it. Number 18, when I talk, it isn't always easy for others to get a word in edgeways. Edgeways, is that a word? I thought it was edgewise. Um, I said slightly disagree, like I've, I'm a listener, but once you get me started on a topic that I like talking about, like autism, you're gonna have a really hard time getting a word in. Number 19, I'm fascinated by numbers, I said definitely agree. Number 20, when I'm reading a story, I find it difficult to work out the character's intentions. Definitely agree. In high school, I had to, I was really smart and I scored really well, like on everything all the time. That's pretty much not an overstatement. Um, but whenever I read books, I had to read spark notes. Like I had to have it explicitly written out, like what was happening. So I, I have a very hard time putting together intentions. Number 21, I don't particularly enjoy reading fiction. This is another one that Dr. Engelbrecht from Embrace Autism said to rewrite because we've learned more about how autism presents now and you might be autistic and love fiction or you might love nonfiction and you can't stand the other, vice versa. So she suggests changing it to, I enjoy reading informative literature but sometimes like reading fiction as well and might use it to learn social skills. So to that, I said definitely agree kind of wordy. Next page, 22. I find it hard to make new friends. I said definitely agree. 
I tend to stick to what I know. 23, I notice patterns and things all the time. Definitely agree. Definitely agree to the point of sometimes it's, it's hard to interact with people because I'm just thinking about patterns. I can expand on that more later, but I don't want this video to be 43 minutes long. 24, I would rather go to the theater than a museum. Again, I'm like, give me a break. Is this Broadway? Is this the National Museum of Science and History? Like, I need details. But I said, definitely agree because I'm a fine arts major and I'm gonna go to the theater. Then I'm like, is it a movie theater? I don't know, but I said definitely agree. 25, it does not upset me if my daily routine is disturbed. I almost can't get through that sentence without ripping this paper in half. Definitely disagree. I need my routine. 26, I frequently find that I don't know how to keep a conversation going. <laughs> yes, definitely agree. It's like so hard, that's why I hate small talk because it's like, you think up something to say, and then you say it, and then it's gone, and it's like a non sequitur, so it sucks. 27, I find it easy to read between the lines when someone is talking to me. Definitely disagree, and I will tell people, I just told someone today, one of my friends, I said, it is my love language for you to speak bluntly to me. Like, please tell me as straightforwardly as you can. That is what I want. 28. I usually concentrate more on the whole picture rather than the small details. I said slightly disagree. Again, this is such a vague question to me. I'm like, I don't know, but I said slightly disagree. 29. I'm not very good at remembering phone numbers. Dr. Engelbrecht suggested changing this one to I'm not very good at remembering information that is important to me. Definitely disagree. If something's important to me, I'm like a locked vault. Like that information's not going anywhere. Number 30. It says, I don't usually notice small changes in a situation or a person's appearance, but Dr. Engelbrecht has suggested changing that to crossing out don't so that it's, I usually notice small changes in a situation or a person's appearance. Again, that's because our concept of autism and understanding of it has grown a lot and evolved in the past 20 years. So previously we, we thought maybe autistic people didn't really notice things as much, but turns out and this is me just speaking off the cuff, like rather than not noticing, maybe we're just not communicating that we're noticing, but actually, in fact, we're noticing a ton of shit. Okay, um, excuse my language, I'm in a mood today. 31, I know how to tell if someone listening to me is getting bored. I definitely agree with that. 32, I find it easy to do more than one thing at once. Nope, definitely disagree. When I talk on the phone, number 33, I'm not sure when it's my turn to speak. <laughs> every time, always, please don't call me, please do not call me, definitely agree. Next page, 34, I enjoy doing things sponta spontaneously, spontaneously. I said slightly disagree, like, I actually do like doing things spontaneously, but I think the heart of the question is like, do you prefer routine or anarchy? <laughs> <laughs> so I said slightly disagree, but I do, I can, I can be spontaneous, spontaneous. What is that from? It's from a show. 35. I am often the last to understand the point of a joke. Definitely agree. I'll make you think that I understand it. I'll laugh at it. And then the whole way home, I'll be trying to put it together in my brain and wonder why everybody was laughing. 36. I find it easy to work out what someone is thinking or feeling just by looking at their face. I said definitely disagree. Again, I usually need you to be pretty straightforward about what's going on. I, but I am really good at picking up on others' energy. Like, I get information not from people's face, but, like, uh, from their body language and, like, the energy that they carry. And I know some of y'all do, too, because you've said it in the comments. Like, a bunch of us are, like, energy people. Like, we read other people's energy. Don't hate on it. Just think about it. Number 37, if there's an interruption, I can switch back to what I was doing very quickly. Definitely disagree. Please don't make me do that. And that's one really part, hard, hard, hard part about being a mom right? Because you're interrupted constantly. My kids are at school right now, so joke's on them. But I love my children more than anything. Again, I'm in a mood today. So <laughs> speaking of interruption, no, I cannot switch back to what I'm doing quickly. 38, I'm good at social chit chat. Definitely disagree. We already had this one, I think. That's for a P. A P. 39, People often tell me that I keep going on and on about the same thing. I said definitely disagree, but also I think that's related to masking. <sighs> no further comments. 40. When I was young, I used to enjoy playing games involving pretending with other children. I said slightly disagree. Pretending to me was using my Barbies to like play out real life scenarios. 
I guess very practical. I remember one of my friends in elementary school, she always wanted to go outside and like play these pretend games and it was so stressful to me. Did not like doing that. 41, I like to collect information about categories of things. Definitely agree. 42, I find it difficult to imagine what it would be like to be someone else. Definitely agree. 43, I like to plan any activities I participate in carefully. Definitely agree. And I've talked about this with other people, down to like Google image searching what the place is gonna look like that I'm going to. I'm not joking. I'll map it out. I'll look at what the storefront is like. I will look at pictures of inside to figure out like where I would like to sit. I'll look at the menu beforehand. So definitely agree. 44, I enjoy social occasions. Next to this, I put question marks and I wrote my brain broke. I don't know what happened when I was taking this test. Yes, I enjoy people and I enjoy, like I do enjoy social occasions. It just, again, this is so vague. Like what kind of social occasions? I love one-on-ones. I love going out and doing fun things with my friends. It just has to be well planned. I have to Google image search it first, so leave me alone. Back off. 45. I find it difficult to work out people's intentions. Again, definitely agree. Some of these are feeling like a repeat. 46. New situations make me anxious. Definitely agree. 47. I enjoy meeting new people. Definitely disagree. 48. I am a good diplomat. Definitely agree. 49. I am not very good at remembering people's date of birth which Dr. Engelbrecht suggested changing to, I'm not very good at remembering information that is important to me, which again is a repeat, but just the inverse of the other question. So I said definitely disagree. That was probably really confusing. Good thing this is YouTube and you can go back and listen to it again. 50, I find it very easy to play games with children that involve pretending no, definitely disagree. So those are my answers to the autism spectrum quotient or the AQ, my score, was wait let's talk about what scores mean again too so you'll be like aha a 26 or greater indicates the presence of autistic traits the higher the score the more autistic traits you have it goes all the way up to 50 and just as a reminder 79.3 percent of autistic people scored 32 or higher and yeah so my score was a Forty-three autistic AF. Just because you score highly on that test does not necessarily mean that you're autistic, but it does mean that you might be. So if you're interested in finding more information about it, go to embrace-autism.com and their online tests, they're all different kinds. Like, and the website is so fun to use. Also, like I said, I was gonna tell you about my autistic community groups. So the number one thing that people want from the channel in the comments and every, the, the common thread is everybody's looking for people to connect to that are like them. And so if you're looking to connect to people like you, I design autistic community groups to be that. They're one off sessions, so you can just sign up for one whenever it works for your schedule. There's no continuing commitment or anything, but each group has a different topic. Like the next one coming up is autistic inertia and demand avoidance. The one after that is autistic meltdowns. I just finished one on autism in the workplace. It's a small group of people who meet together through uh, Google Meet, and it's an opportunity to get to know one another. Everything's guided. I send out all the things that are gonna happen the day before, so you know exactly what to expect. You can keep your camera off if you want to. You can just participate in the text chat if that's something you'd rather do, because I know our communication preferences differ from day to day. So I have suggested introduction questions, so everyone gets to kind of get to know each other. And then I teach on that particular topic related to that community session and then have guided discussion with questions that I send out in advance for you to think about. And then after the session, we all are connected through a WhatsApp group so that we can continue um, talking with each other, discussing ideas, and just reaching out for support whenever we need it. So if you're interested in signing up for one of those, you can sign up at momonthespectrum.life slash coaching. And I'm going to be adding more dates and times very soon because I think every session has booked to capacity. So I'm going to try to add more dates and times soon to accommodate y'all's schedules. I'm going to keep adding topics as well so that we can keep the conversation new and fresh. And I hope you'll join us because it's been really great. And I've been hearing that it's helping other people 
form connections and friendships and find the support that they're looking for for life on the spectrum. So I hope you learned something today. I hope this was helpful to you. Let me know what you score in the comments. I'm curious. And subscribe if you haven't already because I'd love to have you around and this community is amazing. So sending love, being autistic is not a curse. It's not a disease. It's just a different way of seeing the world and I'm here to help you navigate it. So thanks for watching. Click the like button if this was helpful to you, please. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.